Hey, Talia. Hi, Mary Sheila. How's it going over there in Santa Cruz? It's going all right. Yeah. <laughs> so we are going to make some sauerkraut right now and do some fermentation on this lovely Sunday. Yes. This lovely stay inside because of the coronavirus <laughs> spreading Sunday. <laughs> We're like, okay, let's stay inside and make our own sauerkraut. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, just as a, just, I mean, obviously sauerkraut is um, something that you make and it, you ferment it. And so fermented foods are so good for the immune system and yeah. they're so good for the microbiome and sort of creating regularity and pH balance in the gut. And I mean, we could say a ton of things about them, but um, we just thought we'd make some. And I'm actually really excited because I picked a um, cabbage from my garden to make so this. beautiful. I know, and this poor little cabbage, I mean, you could see these leaves would have been really big, like the deer got in one I, night, maybe even twice, and you know, there's definitely some little pests out there, but this is the, the lone survivor. <laughs> it's, that is a gorgeous cabbage. My cabbage is just from the grocery store, it's all fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I have a half of this one, just in case, like, this nice. is, like, insurance. <laughs> nice. Depending on how this one looks. So, right. yeah, so we're going to start chopping our cabbage, and, you know, we could even um, do a little talking about, like, just the cruciferous family, right, a little bit? Yes, and I just want to say before, if anyone's doing this and following along, um, save some of the big leaves, the big outer leaves, because we'll use those at the end to kind of cover the top of the yes. sauerkraut. So I just did that off of, I have one of these big like German ceramic jars and I've been over ambitious in the past trying to do like three or four heads of cabbage plus other veggies, but I made myself only get, you know, only pick two cabbages. So yeah. hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that's more of, uh, uh, correct. And you're going to make yours in your, your um, German jar, and I do mine in just a mason jar. Yeah, so, I love doing it that way too. Yeah, but it's great because we can show the two different ways of making it. Um, yeah. so you don't have one of those cool jars that, that Talia has, but if you have a wide mouth mason jar, that works awesome. <laughs> awesome. And look, my cabbage looks pretty good, actually. Check it out. looks gorgeous. Oh my god. I'm excited. I think it looks great. So, you know, whenever you're making a kraut, it's always good. Just pull out the little center part, just because it's not as edible. I mean, you can keep it in there, but I always just kind of triangle it out. So, yeah, I guess I do too. That's true. Yeah. Okay, so you might not have one of these at home either, but I this is what I love to use for my kraut. I can also just chop it but I have this salad master tool. That's the cruciferous family. And that family of food is so liver detoxifying. So it's definitely anything that supports the liver is gonna support your immunity. Um, it's also, um, it's really high in sulfur, which is also um, gonna help you with those certain pathways of liver detox. And, um, and it helps break down excess estrogens. And that's helpful for both men and women because we, we all have to break down excess estrogens and a lot of the toxins in the environment, like from petroleum and pesticides and herbicides are all um, oil based and they all have like a estrogenic effect in the body. So it's good to eat these greens to break. I really wish I had my, I had bought broccoli for this. Um, I don't have any in the garden. And I'll just say, and I can ask Talia after, I had never used um, broccoli. And for some reason, I think it would be pretty stinky. So I, um, I I've just, done it. I've done it once. It was stinky, but yeah. it was, but it was really interesting. It was just, I tried it once like cabbage, kale, broccoli. I always add a lot of spices. Like in this one today, I'm going to do rosemary, thyme, yeah. Black peppercorn, um, caraway seed, fennel seed, and fenugreek seed. Yeah, and that sounds amazing. And I was going to use a little um, cumin, and, I mean, coriander and fennel. And I have a, a keeper lime. I thought I'd do a little bit, tiny bit of zest, and some green onions and garlic and a little ginger. So kind of a modge podge. I don't know what flavor I'm going for, but 
kind of a mod hodge. And I'm just going to chop the rest of that um, uh, cabbage up. I have cabbage, carrot, beet, daikon, burdock, leek, radish, garlic. Nice. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's the beauty, I think, is you can use so many different things. And, you know, this one thing came from the garden, and the rest of the stuff, I just kind of pulled stuff out of the fridge. When we decided to do this, I was like, what do I have besides my cabbage? So do. that's what I did too. Yeah. And that's, that's the best way to be in your kitchen. And, you know, I mean, it's great to follow a recipe the first time if you need to, but then it's really good to just go with your, your instincts, right? Um, and just see what you want to put together. So we'll even see, I'm going to actually just take this to the sink and, and rinse this since a whole bunch of bugs fell out when I cut it open. So I just rinsed my cabbage and look at the purple water from my salad spinner. <laughs> so cool. Well, so I'm just gonna pop my um, cabbage in there. Okay, and I'm just showing my attachment for the, um, the shredding attachment on my food processor. I don't always use this, but it's fast. Yeah, it's, I mean, when you start getting into making things like this, sometimes you just wanna have that tool that makes things faster. And in this case, you know, I'm using the Salad Master and Talia is using her um, food processor. But just going and chopping it totally works too, right? But, you know, we're trying to save a little time. <laughs> we're busy women. You know, of all the cabbages, um, the, the darker the color of the cabbage, actually the more nutrient dense it is. But what's kind of funny is my husband actually doesn't like purple cabbage. Like if I make purple cabbage salad, he's just like, I don't like that one. I like the green one. So, I mean, he, he has sensitive taste buds because I can't really taste that, taste that much, but he's really, he's particular, but he's also a really good cook. So. Yeah, but most sauerkraut on the market uses green. Is yeah. that just because whatever? No, I don't know why. <laughs> I wonder if just maybe if things oxidize, how they might look, or I don't know. Right, if the purple one is always going to be purple. Yeah. And then maybe even brown, depending on what you you put with it. Like if maybe. Right. So, and I just also think the purple cabbage is so pretty. So I'm going to put a couple of these um, green onions. So the thing about green onions is we always, or I don't know if you do, but you know, a lot of times we just cut them to here. And actually the entire green onion is the most nutrient density is up here to believe it or not. Cause this is the, the part that's up in the sun and having to kind of have a little more protection of itself. So there's more antioxidants and phytonutrients in that top part. So whenever you can use the whole thing, use the whole thing because you're going to get more from it. And the scallions are really nice because they're kind of mild. So they're not super strong flavor that's going to, you know, sometimes onions will really make you tear up, which is actually that tear, that tearing that you get from onions is an enzyme that is activated, that it's activated. And then once we eat it, it works its way in the body and it's very car anti-carcinogenic. So it, it's, it's very supportive in the body, which is pretty cool, even though sometimes it's hard to cut an onion. <laughs> All right, so the onions are going in, and um, I'm going to put a little garlic in, because again, garlic, we're thinking about the immune system. So I want to just talk a little bit about fermentation anyway, because um, like, what is it? How does it, um, you know, what, what's the benefits of it? How does it even work? So on plant foods, there's a ton of bacteria, just like they're all over us too. So all these bacteria are going to... Um, on the plant foods, what we're doing when we ferment is we are creating the perfect environment for all these um, lactic, lactic, lactic acid producing bacteria. We're providing the perfect anaerobic, so without oxygen environment for them to thrive. And what happens is they start producing, producing. When you ferment, there's no vinegar involved. It's just the plant food and salt. So salt is sort of your your preservative. It keeps the fermentation process happening a slower so that we're supporting the beneficial bacteria to grow rather than doing it um, 
without the salt, you have more of a chance of the other bacteria we don't want to be produced. So we're, we're really going for the, you know, we're trying to create the perfect environment. But if you put too much salt in, which I've done a few times, if you put too much salt in, then you might not have a ferment. You might just have a salty, very salty cabbage. So, you know, there's, what I want to show you today is there's a bit of a formula to fermenting. Um, and if you can figure out what that, it, it, once you get the ratios down, then you can um, add, uh, you can make it however you want to make it. Um, so, I, but I'm going to grate a few radishes. Radishes are- Here are my greens. Oops. My leeks. Oh, your leeks. Oh, that's going to be so good. Um, yeah, and leeks are also really good for the liver. A lot of good sulfur for detox. And radishes are really good for the lungs. So again, another organ that we're thinking a lot about right now. So I'm just putting a couple cabbages or radishes and Talia has a daikon radish that she's gonna eat. Yeah. Well, you know, when I was picking out my vegetables for this, like I wanted the beets and the carrots cause I, you know, it's still really cold outside and I knew I wanted something that was gonna be kind of sweet grounding. But then I also wanted lots of immune support specific herbs like the daikon and the, the burdock, the garlic, and the leek. So that's how I, that was my think, my thought process. Perfect. Yeah. And we both have, I know it's funny, we both have a lot of the same ingredients and we didn't even plan. But this is the <laughs> burdock. And again, like if you have a grater or even you can use like a lemon zester, but if you have a salad master, you should consider yourself very lucky. <laughs> burdock is really strong. So that I just did maybe like an inch or maybe an inch and a half. I'm not going to do too much because it has a really strong flavor and I like it, but I don't want it to overpower my... Of the burdock? Yeah, it's pretty strong. And that was a ginger too. Um, and I love... Well, actually, I, I might hold off on the ginger too because um, my husband doesn't like ginger in my sauerkraut. In fact, I have a funny sauerkraut story. I have a, a, lot, a couple of funny sauerkraut <laughs> One of them is, you know, when I first started making sauerkraut, um, I was really excited about it because I needed it. I had a lot of gut dysbiosis and I couldn't get enough of it. And so my, um, anyway, I used to put whey in my sauerkraut and I don't do that anymore. Um, I'm gonna put a little zest in mine too right now. Nice. Um, I don't do that anymore, and um, it makes it way less stinky. It kind of changes the process of fermentation, but I used to think of it as an insurance policy, and it was something that Sally Fallon taught how to make it, um, and that's where I originally learned how to make it from her book called Nourishing Traditions. Um, anyway, so in her book, she had, had you put whey and salt in, and I'll show you how I do that in a second. And... Um, it made it really stinky. So every time I would open the crowd jar, my family would be like, oh, mom, that's disgusting. Go outside. I hate that, you know. And I couldn't get my daughter to try it for the life of me. So one day I'm in, I'm in the kitchen and all of a sudden I smell the smell and I'm like, oh my God, what is that smell? And I turn around and my husband has the crap jar open. And he's like, it's not just us. It's just, you know, it smells terrible. So my husband wouldn't eat my kraut and we, you know, so if we ever had food where we want sauerkraut, he would go down and buy bubbies. And I was like, oh my God, uh, like you're not eating my kraut. And then he's like, I don't know. I just don't really like your kraut. Well, we have these good friends, our neighbors, and they're really good cooks. And we went out with them one night. We came home to their house, like kind of late. And I think maybe had a little nightcap. And my friend Ming, she put, she put, a, it gave us each a little jar of sauerkraut. And we were eating it. My husband's like, this is so good. This is the best sauerkraut I ever had. And she looks at him, she's like, your wife made it. <gasps> no way! Oh, that's awesome. Like, okay, so here we go. Um, and then a few years, or, or I don't know when it was, but a few years ago, my daughter decided to clean out the kitchen, the refrigerator, and label everything, label all the shelves and the cupboards. And she got, she found all my jars of ferments and she put all in one jar and she labeled that one mom jars of crap <laughs> it was pretty funny oh my god that's so, like, I know. so i got a little zest in there so here's what i'm gonna do so 
Whenever I make a sauerkraut, I usually do about one uh, cabbage. And with one cabbage, I usually do about a tablespoon of salt. That's the ratio. So I have one cabbage, it was kind of small, and then I did, you know, maybe another quarter of another one because I, I used half of it. So I have one, and then I also put a carrot and a couple other things. So I'm actually going to do a heaping tablespoon of salt. Um, that's going to be my ratio today. Okay. And it's, you know, again, it's a little bit of feel, but that's about the ratio. So I've got a heaping tablespoon right here, and I'm just going to drizzle that in. Now, here's another technique that I learned actually from one of my students. And see, sometimes I even get to like kind of near the end of the salt, and I'm like, I don't think I need all of it. So I just put it back. So maybe it was more like a tablespoon. Um, now, if I was just going to make this, um, if I wasn't making this for you know, a Zoom, I would probably um, add all the salt, stir it up together, and then go do something else. Because, and I, because that way, the salt, what the salt does is it starts breaking it down and pulling out the liquid. So the action of salt is liquefaction, liquefying things. Um, so, you know, that's why you marinate meat to kind of break up and tenderize the meat. Um, so it's going to, what would happen if I came back in like a half an hour is it would all be kind of wilted and it'll be a lot more liquid. So that's a one process you can do just to make it a little easier on yourself. Um, and then now that, but I'm not going to, you know, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to get right to it. But what I'm going to do is. Um, there's lots of ways at this point. So I've got my whole medium in here like this. I can actually throw a little bit in like the Cuisinart, what Talia has, and help break it down so that it liquefies. If I don't want to sit here and pound, I can take my hands and massage it um, and break it down. I can take a rock, right? Sometimes I use a rock set, like a jade stone or whatever, and break it down. I could use, you know, like anything, right? Or I could put it in my Vitamix for just a minute, you know, like half of it and just pulse it real quick. The point is I'm trying to extract the water from it. So I'm just gonna start with the pounding. And the pounding is gonna start to really break down the cell walls and it's gonna start to release a lot of its juices and liquids. And that's what I'm going for because fermentation is an anaerobic process, meaning there's just not a lot of um, it, it, there's no oxygen. We want it to be totally submerged. And I'm not going to add water. I'm going to actually extract the water from the cabbage. Woo, what's that? It looks pretty. It's oh, just yeah. oh, on, on the edges. Totally. I used two cabbages and it basically had this bowl like overflowing. So I separated them into two, two different bowls. So now I have, I can really toss it and get all the, you know, all the little bits of burdock and garlic and beat throughout. And then I'm gonna massage it with my hands because I don't have a pounder. Yeah. Um, I could put a little bit in the food processor. I actually might do that just because I've never done that before. Yeah, it just makes it go quicker. It's kind of yeah, I might try that. Um, I'm gonna use Himalayan black salt. Ooh. So I am using a sulfuric salt because I just, number one, it's just very vata reducing and that is part of the you know, the fermentation, you know, completely transforms cabbage from a vata increasing food to a vata decreasing food through the fermentation process of creating all of this, um, you know, all of that uh, lactobacillus action and, and all of that. Um, but particularly because it does develop that taste of sour and sour is one of the absolute best tastes for getting vata irregular digestion on the move. So I'm going to extra, you know, vata proof this by using Himalayan black salt, which is really sulfur rich. Does it taste, have that taste like kalanamak? Yeah, it is kalanamak. Oh, okay. okay. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm going to, um, I just have to add my fenugreek seed and then I'm gonna stir my, my um, I already did my zest and now I'm gonna stir in my spices before I really go to town on um, mixing and massaging it. Ooh, fenugreek seed. I feel like that's gonna be so good for liver detox in this 
with the burdock and the and then the rosemary so I've got a little bit of lung action and the black peppercorns you ever do that no but that sounds really good do you just put whole or do you yeah. great dry? No, well I love I love I'm not everyone's the same as me with this but I love biting into like a, a juniper berry or a black peppercorn or a whole coriander seed in my kraut. I just like gives this other burst of flavor that you weren't expecting. And then, it, and then that flavor has a direct effect on your digestion too. Um, so I just love it. I love that idea, but I'd be, I'm afraid like if somebody broke a tooth. <laughs> well, no, no, cause it softened, they soften. Okay. Yeah, they soften in the in the fermentation process. They're not hard anymore. Okay, well, I'm going to do that then because um, I, we like pepper. I mean, or not as, you know, they don't get like mushy, but they're not like... Um, I'm going to put a few... You're not going to hurt your teeth. You're not going to break your tooth on one. That's for sure. Yeah, because that would be a bummer. Yeah. And I have to grate a little, uh, or just grind a little pepper into it. And I've never actually put pepper in my kraut, so I'm going to try something new. I feel like, too, when I massage kraut, I can feel with my hands if I need more salt or not. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, you, really, you really get in there, right? When you're yeah. In there. And I've done that a few times, and when I teach fermentation classes, I don't have enough of my tools to go around, so sometimes people will just massage until it liquefies. And you know, one thing I'll say is Napa cabbage is my favorite cabbage to ferment with, and it's the weirdest. So as long as I've been pounding this time around, if I was using Napa cabbage, I'd probably be done. Like, right, red so cabbage. Red cabbage is the, takes the longest to break the down. Driest, right? Yes. Yeah. So, the most vata. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's probably why you don't see it all the time in the stores, like you were saying, you know? Yeah. And, you know, if you're, you know, if you're watching this and you're, like, you haven't even eaten many crowds, you know, you can always start with buying one. There's, there, you can kind of find them everywhere. You could buy it and try it that way first. Uh, I think I'm ready to put my bowl actually, so in my jar. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start scooping it in there. So again, remember it's an it's an anaerobic process. So now that I have about halfway full, I'm going to bring my my thing down and I'm just going to push it down. I'm going to try to get all the air out, and that's the secret. One time, I put all the air down, and um, I had sauerkraut. You know what it tasted like? You know when you were a kid and you would um, like drink water out of the hose? <laughs> I don't know if you ever did that, but it tasted like water out of the hose. You know, like you, you, in your backyard and you like put on the hose and you drink water out of it. Sure. Like, oh my God, I haven't done that forever. I know, and when I tasted it, I was like, oh my God, that reminds me of when I was little. <laughs> when I used to drink water out of the hose. So I don't know if you could see this, but it's totally liquidy. Can you see that kind of like? Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, so I'm just pushing it down, you know, and if I didn't have this, you could even use it like a smaller jar, you know, like a smaller, small mouth um, jar and just push down or you could use your face. Well, I'll show you something cool from this um, ceramic one. Okay. This is a real traditional ceramic. Um, our cup maker is this is a stone that that's gonna one of the half of the stone that's gonna um, sit on top. So I can also use this as my mashing tool. Yeah. And then it'll so it's a mashing tool now, and then it'll be a weight um, when it's in the jar. You know, sometimes you have to do two different sizes, or so it's nice when it's spot on. And remember, you just want to pack it a little bit as you go, because sometimes it'll just overflow um, when you, if you want to see it from the beginning, it'll overflow and you'll have too much liquid on top. Oh my god. I just took a bite. It's so good. Wow. It is amazing. So we are making medicine. We are making medicine. 
And it'll be ready in seven to 10 days. Yeah. <laughs> so mine, you know, when I do mine in a mason jar, and um, I usually leave it out, depends on the time of year, but I usually leave it out for three to five days and it's usually pretty, pretty much ready again. Um, it's warmer where you are. Santa Cruz really takes forever. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. not forever, but I'm usually on the longer edge of end of fermentation right. time for everything. And it might be a little bit different in the crock versus, um, you know. Yes, because the, there's less surface area in the mason jars. It does go faster. Exactly. So but I love doing it in mason jars. That's how I do it when I teach at a cooking class so everyone can go home exactly. with it. But yeah, mine totally got juicy too. Yay. Recording. So, yeah. <laughs> so beautiful. Look at that. So That's what perfect. I'm going to do is, is I, I, thankfully Talia reminded us to save some of these guys. Um, so I've got one from my homegrown cabbage. I'm just going to stick this on top and then I'm going to just kind of slip it in as much as I can. And then the other thing that I usually do um, is I put a stone on top of it so that it holds it down. So it's just like an extra little holding down. Yes. And, um, only the finest for me, a big piece of Big Sur Jade. Nice. And I'm just gonna stick that in there. So now everything is submerged. I, I washed my rock right before I put it in. Usually just a paper towel. And I just kind of wipe down the stuff that's not gonna be submerged. So there's no little pieces hanging out. Um, and that way, just clean, you know, a clean deal. And then I'm gonna throw the lid on it. I'm going to put this on my counter for about three or four days and maybe up to five, like the cooler it is, the longer I go. And then I'm just going to put this in my refrigerator. And after three to five days, I'm good. I'm done. You know, every once in a while, or even often, a lot of times things will, especially if they're not held down firm enough, things will sort of settle. And sometimes the liquid will pool down there and then everything will kind of rise up. So if that happens, you just go in and you could use like a spoon or wash your hand and you just push everything back down and get the liquid to come back up. Sometimes you might even have kind of a little bit of brown on the top. Just scoop that off when you're ready to eat it and you know, push everything down. You know, there are some people that will say that you, know, you need to use um, you know, the special lids so you can continue to burp it and all that kind of stuff. And I have some of those lids and that's, they're great, but you don't have to use it. So I like to teach it without it because honestly, um, I don't want you to feel like you can't start because you don't have the right equipment. And if you don't have one of these guys, um, you can get one at the hardware store or even at your local grocery store or store. At Goodwill. Yeah, exactly. Goodwill. Honestly, I have, all, I have over the years bought all of those gadgets. I have never used them. Yeah. I never, I have never used them because it's just, this is the way I learned. Exactly. And it's so basic and simple and it works. So that's what I do. Yeah. Now I have had sauerkraut come out all different ways, um, including with like all the liquid coming up so high and then maybe there being like a layer where it looks like gray or rotten and kind of gross. So when that happens, I'll pour out some of the liquid, um, just enough to get like the, the part that seems, the part that has become bad, like, um, uh, you know, on top without liquid on it, I'll scrape that off. And then the rest of the crowd is fine. Exactly. So, like it's not a waste if you get a, even an, an inch, um, even two inches, which I've never gotten of kind of, ugh. yeah, so you just have to go and get all of it out and it's good. good. Yeah. It's good. And, and that's the thing too. I mean, a lot of times people think, you know, what about botulism? And that's something that's happening when you're canning and things aren't totally sterile. And that's the beauty of this is actually not only is this the, the bacteria from my garden, from all my cabbage and all my organic produce, it's also the kind of the bacteria of my environment. So when you make something, you're really, you know, letting those things kind of ferment and come to life. And, um, you know, again, this is medicine. This is immune boosting. This is totally supporting the microbiome, which is you know, the educator of your immune system and um, helping you to break down and assimilate the foods that you eat. So the more activated and nourished that they are, um, the more you're going to get out of your food to boost your immune system and to just to boost your whole overall vitality. Yeah. We'll have to post pics of our 
kraut when it's finished. Yeah, what does yours look like? Well, I'll see if I can show you. Um, can you see that? Oh yeah, whoops, yeah. Okay, cool. So that is your, um, that's your, it's weighted down and you've got it all in there and it'll just sit like that for five to seven days or whatever. Um, I put I put the stones down net side by side and then I put a jar of full honey on top just to weigh just it down. because in the I haven't used this this um this jar in a long time and I just feel like I don't know I just have a sense it needs a little more weight and then there's a lid I don't know where it is but there's a lid for this and then you pour water so it's like a moat oh yeah of water around the edge so that's kind of nice because it doesn't smell as bad. That's really good. But you, you know, you also have to remember to check on it if you're not smelling it. Totally. I want to just like put it somewhere and be all, oh my God, I forgot I made sauerkraut. You know, it might be fine. It um, might be fine. And that's like that. It's very forgiving that way. Yeah. Yeah. That is, might be overdone. <laughs> right. I mean, that is kind of the cool thing about sauerkraut, making raw, your own raw sauerkraut. It is, it is, it's very inexpensive, especially compared to how much it costs to purchase it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, gets you in the kitchen, gets you playing with different vegetables and spices that you might not use otherwise. And then really seeing the fruits of your labor can be so, so cool. Yeah. So, yeah, so this was fun. We had a, we had a sauerkraut making party. Yeah, Sunday sauerkraut, woo woo. <laughs> Well, thanks for tuning in, and um, I hope you guys make some sauerkraut and let us know when you do. Bye.